Hi, this is John Shook, and I wanted to give a quick update to my entry in the Hackaday Prize Contest, the Remote Indicating Water Meter. Um, I'm going to start out by giving you a brief walk through my test setup here. If you remember my last build log, you remember I talked about needing something to simulate the uh, action of the water meter outside so I didn't have to keep running back and forth to develop the software for the transmitter. And this is basically what I came up with. Um, here you see um, an inexpensive surplus gear motor that I picked up, but discovered that just by bearing the voltage, you can't get it to run smooth enough. It just stalls when the voltage gets too low. So what we have back here is a little PIC microcontroller that's basically taking the voltage setting from this pot, which is set up as a voltage divider, turning that into a PWM setting. There's a, a TIP transistor there driving the motor through the cable, and by varying this pot, I can control the speed of how fast that motor goes. And I don't know if you can hear it in the mic, but it really whines when you get it down slow. But that works very well. Down at the other end, you see this is just a long wooden skewer. I, I did the long skewer to keep the magnetic field from the motor away from the sensor out there. Uh, when I did this the first time, I had them close and was trying to figure out where all that noise was coming from, and it was actually the motor. Off the end, um, this is just an Ethernet cord to patch this sensor back into the microcontroller there. Um, and there's just a little permanent magnet, pretty crudely hot glued onto the end of the wooden skewer. But it does work, and you'll see that with this PWM setup, I can get the rotation of this magnet very, very slow. Which, in the actual water meter out by the street, if you have water on just a trickle, it actually does run that slowly. From this angle, you can still see the sensor over here in the Ethernet cable that comes back in through this adapter. Um, another PIC microcontroller. This is the actual microcontroller that's going to go in the transmitter out by the street. Um, down at this end, there's a level converter, and you can't see it, but there's a 5-volt regulator in there, or a, excuse me, a 3.3-volt regulator in there. The sensor and the microcontroller run on 3.3 volts, but this LCD display needs 5 volts to operate. Um, I should point out that that LCD display is there just to help me create the software and do debugging of the software as I put this all together. Plus, it's kind of handy because in this demonstration for you, you'll be able to see what's going on. One of the tricky things about using this sensor is that it's a three-axis sensor, which actually works pretty well in this system because as a final product, I really didn't want an end user to have to pay attention to how they orient the sensor relative to the water meter, which also presumes they know how the magnet is situated inside the water meter and it could end up requiring all sorts of trial and error and just make installing it a bit cumbersome for someone who's not really technical and doesn't understand what's going on. Using a three-axis sensor what we can do is allow the end user to install the sensor in any orientation that's handy up against the water meter and then allow the software in our PIC microcontroller to actually figure out which way or which axis is picking up the best signal, which is what I'll demonstrate here in a second this processor actually does. When it's powered up, the first thing it does is an auto calibration routine where it measures the span of measurements on each of the three axes, X, Y, and Z. By span, I mean it, re it runs the motor like 15 revolutions and it accumulates the lowest reading for a given axis it ever saw and the highest axis reading it ever saw and it does that for all three axes and then once it's got its 15 rotation samples it calculates the span of each one of those and whichever span is the largest is the axis it then chooses to do the rest of the measurements on and then it goes into a tight loop just looking at that one axis. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot this microcontroller, the small one that's going to end up in the uh, transmitter. Um, 
and again I should point out that this LCD display and all this level shifting stuff is just for development none of that's going to be in the end unit um, is you can see the three axes min max and span and as I release the reset um, it takes about three seconds to get through and now it's starting to read the axes um, you can see up the zero up in this corner that's actually counting the revolutions but I have the motor turned off so it's stationary right now so obviously you'll see the min and maxes are the same for all three axes I'll turn the motor on here in a second and what you'll see is these numbers will start to change and it'll start incrementing the, the rotation counter as soon as that gets to 15 actually I think you'll only see 14 because it doesn't actually show the 15 it will stop making readings it will calculate the span and whichever span is the largest it's going to then select that one to monitor and you'll see down here is a blue LED that once it figures out which access axis it's going to monitor it goes into a tight loop and just reads that axis and you should see one flash of the LED for every revolution of the motor so let me go ahead and turn the motor on here so our magnets now rotating and you can see those numbers change and as soon as that counter gets up to uh, 14 or 15 it's going to stop calculate the span there it is and X <clears throat> no Z was our highest number and now you can see the LED flashing that indicates or it's flashing in time with the revolutions of the uh, magnet. I've moved the camera over here so you can get a better view of both the magnet and the LED indicating cycle detection and if you watch closely you'll see that it's pretty well well not pretty well it's absolutely synchronized with that magnet if I turn this speed down well, let's turn it all the way down there you saw a flash and it'll go a full 360 degrees before it flashes again which should be right about there so what I point out here is that the magnet in the actual water meter out by the street one revolution is actually a fairly small fraction of a gallon so ultimately this is should provide a really high resolution measurement of how much water is being consumed instantaneously so from here um, I gotta get back into the software and delete all the stuff that's running that LCD get the LCD out of the circuit get the level shifter out of the circuit and I don't know if you saw but on the controller board well let me move the camera again my microcontroller is on a little development board available from Tautic Electronics and you'll see it has a, a very small proto area there but that's going to be plenty for me all I've got to do is move the uh, I squared C um, pull up transistors have to go on there the voltage regulator goes on there uh, the LED is just for development and then a socket so that I can plug the uh, magnetic sensor right on there too and oh and the little wireless transmitter module but there's plenty of room there so that's the next thing I gotta do is clear out all of that LCD driver stuff from the software move the components I'm gonna use onto that little proto board and then basically the sensor transmitter part of this project is done and actually I believe this is the most complicated part of this project is getting that sensor and and, and all the math to accurately detect the rotation of that magnet in there and allow for magnetic interference and allow for noise and it turned out to be a bit of a challenge but I think I got it nailed pretty well um, as soon as I get the transmitter in here we'll just be sending one pulse for every revolution of that magnet um, and the re receiving side then just has to tabulate and display the data in a usable form and ship it out onto the internet when necessary so hopefully that's what I'll be showing you in the next uh, build update. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.